this portion of my contribution to the MOOC, I'm going to talk about third space theory. Most of the time, when people talk about third space theory, or third space, they think of the space where they're not, on the, uh, not when they are on the internet. For instance, I'm at my computer terminal, and you're at your computer terminal, so where are we really when we interact? Am I on your monitor? Are you in my computer? No. People think of third space in the same way that they think about another way to talk about it, perhaps, is cyberspace, where if you remember the quotation that I have on my page of the MOOC, um, it's an imagined, imagined place uh, of people who interact together on the internet or digitally. This was pre-internet when the term cyberspace came up. It's just a place where we are. Well, it's kind of true, but we can get more deeply into that conception if we think about three theories about third space and what they're supposed to do. Because I really want to know if there is a space or a place that's third space. I want to know if there are qualities that make it a third space or if it's just the fact that it's there makes it a third space. How can we tell it's third space? And if we can tell that it's third space, can we use that productively in some way? Okay, the first third space theory that I'm going to you know, talk about is Homi Baba, uh, his cultural third space, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm not going to ask you to read Homi Baba. He was voted the worst writer ever a couple of years in a row because his prose is impenetrable. Um, and I just, it's just very difficult to read and it's, and you just have to trust me. Uh, but anyway, in his third space theory comes from a post-colonial perspective. And he has defined the first space, because if there's a third, there's got to be a first and a second. Um, his first space is the space of the home, the cultural home, the space of the indigenous, or, or for lack of a better word, the native people of a land or a culture. Um, the, cult, the cultural expression that they, they perform in this, in this area, in this place. It goes with you. I mean, if I'm this indigenous or native person, I, in a colonial structure, my first space goes with me wherever I am. Then comes the second space, which is the imposed colonial structures. Um, if you think about, in particular, um, the colonialism as it was manifested by uh, Great Britain in India, or which he particularly talks about, or how it um, was manifested in Africa and places like that, where they imposed a British structure of law, government, religion, and sometimes a more trivial cultural uh, entities such as social ways to act in society, you know, like the way you would eat dinner and the way you go to tea and things like that. Um, that's the second space. And then the first space you have the native people or the indigenous people who will have to function in that second space. Well, that second space does not allow them, according to Baba, uh, much in the way of resources to articulate their identity as, it, as they feel it. If you think back to my discussion of identity on the first part of this, you remember that identity is produced through the interaction between uh, people, that it's not just something I have, it's something I do, and something I think, and, and largely something I say. So the, the, third, the second space of the colonial uh, structure doesn't allow for the articulation of this first space identity that the indigenous or native people have. So they carve out a third space. They can't function fully in the second space because for obvious reasons in a colonial structure, generally speaking, there's discrimination, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the social classes are determined largely by you know, things like color, race, language, and so they're not ever completely taken into the second structure of the indigenous people. You can see some of this uh, being useful for talking about some cultural and social things that are happening in the United States today. Uh, but we'll leave that for a different MOOC, probably. Anyway, 
they, uh, this, this, the people carve out this third space where they are able to create a sort of hybrid culture where they can bring in the useful and productive and things, I guess, entities that help them in cultural processes and ways of thinking that help them articulate them, their identity into, within and use the things from the colonial structure or functioning with those things from the colonial structure, the second space, to create a hybrid kind of identity or a hybrid kind of culture. When people talk about post-colonial things, like the post-colonial novel or the post-colonial films, um, often what they're seeing is a hybrid, or they're talking about as a hybrid manifestation of these two, a first space and a second space. So it's a third space where this happens. And as you can tell, it's not really geographically located. It's where this person, these two cultures interact. It could perhaps, it can happen in your home, it could happen in a school, it could happen anywhere. We, are, we don't really designate in this theory, this is a second space, this is a first space, this is a third space, um, that's always static. However, you can often and frequently um, see that certain spaces tend more, certain geographical locations or areas or cultural locations are more clearly leaning towards either a first spaceness or a second spaceness. Like my home, if I my home is a first space for me, especially my childhood home. That's where I was formed culturally. I I acquired the things that were important to my family and my extended family, and then in their relate and in the way that they related to the larger culture. And then the second space for me would have been when I went to school, went to church, interacted with official things. And luckily, my first and second space um, weren't as far apart, the identities in both of those things, the way I could manifest my identity um, in relation to those things wasn't as far apart as it is for some people and not as close as it was for some people. So you can see there's things that go along with it. There's economics, culture, language, race, those types of things are related to first space and second space. So here we are in the third space, struggling to articulate our identity, okay, the cultural one, it has implications for school and all kinds of things. Um, and that's one of my special interests is the way it's manifested in the classroom, even in a classroom at Geneseo, for example.